Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, apart from managing teams remotely during this coronavirus pandemic, I'm sure a lot of us are finding it just as challenging to manage children and barking dogs at home. So we're very thankful to have you here with us for the Managing Remotely webinar. My name is Dan Murphy. I'm the Program Manager for Georgia Community Options, and I'll be administering today's webinar session. Managing Remotely will kick off a series of three webinars from Georgia Community Options that will conclude next Thursday on March 26th. Georgia Community Options offers a suite of services that are available at no cost to help commuters and employers make the switch from driving alone as part of a regional strategy to help reduce traffic and improve air quality. Part of that strategy includes telework consulting services. So not only thankful to have Elham here to speak with us today, but she also supports our team with knowledge and experience with her services year round. Just a few housekeeping notes here. The, uh, for the sake of the presenters, we have muted all participants for the duration of the presentation. The webinar will be recorded and we made available on the GCO website. Next, I'd like to call out the, the Q&A feature here on Zoom, if you can see at the bottom. Um, if you have any questions you'd like us to answer, please click the Q&A button and you'll be able to drop the questions in there. And at the very end of the presentation, I'll moderate those, pres moderate those questions for today's panel. And with that, I'll hand it over to Johan Weber, the Program Manager of Premier Connects. Thanks, Dan. Um, thank you all for joining us during what I understand is for all of us a very hectic and anxious time. Um, as Dan mentioned, I'm the Program Manager for Perimeter Connects. Um, we work with employers to improve commuting as a service of the Perimeter Community Improvement Districts, one of the many business districts in the area. And similarly to Georgia Commute Options, we spend a, a chunk of our time supporting employers around telework and flex work advising. There's obviously a lot of uncertainty abounding right now. We wanted to do our part to provide more guidance and stability for remote work as quickly and accessibly as possible. We hope this helps all of you and your teams to maintain your competitiveness and collaboration with a minimal amount of disruption. Jumping into teleworking at the scale right now uh, feels a little bit like a forced experiment. However, I hope you all also see it as a tremendous opportunity. This could be the chance to make your organizations more resilient and more productive. It could create practices that improve quality of life for your people with less stress and more time. So please tap into the free resources and support of your local partners like us at Perimeter Connects. If you're not sure who that is, please contact Georgia Commute Options and they'll connect you. We have the good fortune to have Elham Shirazi as a consultant to Georgia Commute Options. Elham is one of the nation's foremost experts in telework programs with over 30 years of experience advising telework development for organizations like Mercedes-Benz, Cox Enterprises, Delta, and Home Depot. As you'd imagine, her work is in pretty high demand right now. So we're honored to have her take the time um, and be present to lead these regional sessions. So thank you, Elham, for joining us and I will hand it off to you. Thank you, Johan, for this warm um, introduction and good afternoon to all of you. Um, as you know, the reason behind having this webinar is to help you with some issues that are coming to a forefront in your workplace in terms of managing employees and in terms of employees getting started in a situation where they've gone from zero days of teleworking to maybe 100%. Um, what we're presenting today are just some high level tips. And so we are available through the you know, local TMAs, through the GCO, Georgia Commute Options Program, to provide much more tailored and one-on-one -on -one assistance to all of you to help you make teleworking a better experience given this unprecedented situation that we're in today. Um, you know, I was thinking about, um, you know, what are some typical reasons that management commitment um, would allow teleworking to happen in the workplace. And as you see, here's a, here's a list of, you know, what a lot of times goes into um, allowing staff to um, you know, work remotely. Sometimes it's for productivity. A lot of times these past few years, we've seen that recruitment retention angle come up. Morale obviously is tied to that and it's an issue. Some employers wanna reduce their carbon footprint or they wanna reduce their overhead needs. 
for some, it's a means of, you know, being more sustainable. And it used to be to prepare for emergencies. Um, and obviously there are other reasons. However, um, a lot of those reasons are probably why, aren't why we're there today. And actually I took a look at, um, you know, the list of a lot of the people who are attending today's session. And what I realized is that with many of you, we've had this conversation about teleworking, but we said, maybe management's not ready yet. Well, now we come to today's reality. And, you know, unfortunately, um, as I said, we're not living in an ideal world. Um, let me share with you on a personal note that I have been working for the past few months with a client of mine, which is a world organization. I can't mention their name yet, um, but they are located in um, Northern Italy. And we were trying to, you know, develop policies to allow people to telework actually once every two weeks. So all of a sudden, about um, uh, three and a half weeks ago, they were told that they had to work at home full time. The following week, what I saw happen was that not only were the employees working at home in you know, this province right outside of uh, Lombardy, but that all the schools were closed. The following week, what starts kicking in was the, the distance learning. And I have to tell you that right now, they are just on top of each other. And don't forget, their homes are not as big as some American homes. And, you know, it's a, it's a very difficult situation where they have to get used to everybody being under the same space and trying to practice um, social distancing. So I guess we don't have the luxury of pilots. Some of you may have had pilots, but for those who haven't, this is our pilot. And we're, we're getting, you know, we're being pushed into a situation where you can maybe get some rules together. And again, we're here to help you. Um, but like Johan said, this is a unique position that we're in to actually test teleworking. And you know what? Week by week, we will get more resilient. But we have to make sure that we're learning and we, we have feedback loops and that every week we're collecting information. So. Um, the right mindset, and I bet everyone's going to go, oh, Elhan's from California, and here's where, you know, Californians get, you know, kind of warm. But um, I really believe that we have to all be united in making sure that we as leaders, as managers, as employees, are forgiving and understanding of everyone's situation in this human tragedy. So just a few quick top-of-the-line tips. Please don't overreact. Because, you know, just take a moment, pause this, you know, at whatever the situation is. And I really, I mean these in the context of work. Be calm, be optimistic. Um, we need to, you know, make sure that we keep each other's spirits up. And even if that means a phone call to your coworker, just to say, hey, how are you? Um, that might be something that, that we, we should be doing today. And um, very importantly, have empathy and be understanding, as I said, of, of what's going on. And hopefully um, with the next you know, set of guidelines that we give you, you can become more transparent and make things work better. So what is the manager's role in this environment? Well, the manager really, and by the way, I'm gonna give some tips for managers and I'm gonna get into tips for employees. Um, so let's start with the manager's role. Um, really, the manager needs to foster a work environment that can help maximize productivity, but with limitations of untested technology in some areas, probably many, with people using their own computers, with trust whether or not it was there in the workplace and having to assume, you know, that we have the, you know, some parameters to get the, to getting the work done and having some good communication protocol in place while we respect, you know, all these other things that are happening, such as employees, um, you know, children having to be home, in some cases, maybe having to take care of sick family members. And as I said, the lack of space for teleworking and resources. Um, if you're using your personal computer and maybe your child has to get some social distance, I mean, I'm sorry, some distance learning um, from their educator, 
we, we have to look at how we shift priorities. Okay, so um, as with teleworking, um, you know, I think it's good to have some good guidelines in place in terms of um, setting up goals with um, your people who are working at home. So the recommendation is, first of all, help your employees identify what are the goals um, that they need to work on for that first week of teleworking. And I'm really thinking that this is going to be a week by week type of a transformation in the workplace. So um, if you manage a lot of people, then maybe you can have some other people, you know, talk to them, or it may even be that you have a conference call. So first of all, identify what are the goals for that week one, um, and define what are the deliverables that we want to see at the end of this week with timelines, timeframes, and asking individual emails uh, I'm sorry, asking individual employees to perhaps sending, you know, just a short outline of what they've agreed to work on and what those deliverables are. By the end of the week, I highly recommend you review status, whether it's by the group or whether it's by the employee, figure out how you make some changes and try repeating this for the second week. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but believe me, in the long run, it's going to be worth it. This is a very simple template, you know, um, that either your employees can use this just to identify what they're going to be working on, you know, for that first week. Um, or, um, you know, uh, in some cases, you may not even need it. But it does come down to task deliverable and what the accomplishment is that you um, will be, uh, you know, wanting to uh, hopefully get to by the end of the week. Now, don't forget. At the moment, you are probably you probably um, have a lot of different styles of management given the tile, type of employee who you're dealing with. And those of you from an HR background obviously are very familiar with these terms, directing, coaching, advising, and delegating. With some employees, you may have to get a lot give a lot of direction. So, you know, I want um, you know, this many um you know, calls made, and this is the turnaround, and this is what the quality should be, and this is how many sales. Um, and or it may just be very, very specific type of instructions. That is not going to change because of having adopted um, teleworking. With some employees, it's not as much direction. It's a little bit of coaching and helping them get there. With some, it's more on the advising level. And obviously, those you delegate to, which are people that you, you know, you, they know what the assignments are, they know what it gets to take it done, they will probably let, need a lot less um, instruction. So don't forget, this does not change as a result of this emergency. But please, um, you know, keep in mind that we want to develop trust. We are going to be managing electronically. Asking questions is very important. And we want to encourage people to become independent. I know this is a lot to, to go to in, in, a, in a week or two or three or four, but this is, these are some of the steps that are involved. Now, with communications, we do want to look at how we are communicating today in the office place. And how is that going to change? Um, you know, uh, what do we do on an impromptu basis when we walk around? And so we, you know, uh, as managers or, you know, as we, um, you know, talk to employees. So we, we, we need to pause and remember that we have to do it by phone or electronically. Something that I think we all have to remember, because this is not what we do in current day, um, you know, work environment, is that it's okay to interrupt. Um, a lot of us are, you know, very hesitant to pick up the phone and call our coworkers. We sit next to each other, we email, we text. In this kind of a situation, if you need a conversation, call each other. If text will do it, you know, use text. If it's an IM, whatever it is, it's okay to pause and ask questions. And the more questions we ask up front, maybe we'll get to um, a point where, um, you know, we're not having as many of those um, interruptions if they are, in fact, interruptions. I think something that 
uh, maybe managers and employees should talk about is how their schedule is going to be affected by the presence of other individuals in their home. Um, work and home are the same place now. So look at if you know people can start later, look at if people can end sooner. Um, you know, it hasn't, it's become so common in the past few weeks for people to tell me, let's schedule this when my children are taking a nap. And you know, in another, I would say a month ago, that kind of a question would never even be, um, we would have never been, you know, that flexible. But those rules are going out the door right now, given what we're, we're facing. However, if it's possible, you know, do um, talk with the employees as to maybe what those core hours are so that they can make, um, you know, some conscious decisions as to, you know, what are the hours? Is it, you know, 11 to 2? Is it, you know, um, you know 10, 10 to 1? What are the hours that it's very important that they try to keep those disruptions to a minimum? Okay. As far as communications, um, obviously, you know, golden rule of teleworking has always been that teleworkers should be accessible, whether it's by email, whether it's by text, whether it's by chat, um, whether it's by phone. I think those rules are still in place. However, um, and again, especially during the core hours, but I think if we are not getting a call back, um, we need to be patient and, you know, because there might be an emergency that has come up for the employee whereby they cannot take their call. Maybe their two-year-old's having, you know, a terrible two moment. Um, or maybe their teenager is just, you know, uh, is just having cabin fever. So we do need to be considerate. Um, I, I think that employees should feel also very comfortable calling you and contacting you as a manager. So please make sure that that is part of your messaging so that they know that the, the doors are open. Um, very important. I mean, it's still, it would still be good to keep some kind of scheduling in place for everybody, a transparent scheduling, you know, platform, whether you use Outlook or whether you use something else, it's good to have, um, you know, uh, some indications of when um, an employee is available, when a manager is av available, or, you know, maybe what is personal non-available time. Uh, this is something we would have never seen before, but that kind of gives us an idea of how to communicate with each other and when to communicate with each other. Believe me, it's going to be tough for the first week or two, but things will get easier. So some other tips on communication. Um, you know, a lot of times in offices, we, we talk about how that talk over the, uh, you know, the water cooler is so important because we're just exchanging some great brainstorming ideas, you know, or, you know, suddenly like, you know, a few people get together, um, you know, and they start a conversation. I want you to keep that in mind because that can still happen when you're at home. So if two of you are communicating and you think, you know, maybe Sally, you know, Mary and Joe should also be part of this conversation pause and include them. Um, and, you know, again, that's not so hard to do. So it might allow you still to brainstorm with the technology that's available. By the way, if all you have is a phone, then, then add people to the phone. Um, and it may be the situation that some of you are in. Um, obviously, FaceTime is really important. And by FaceTime, what I mean is not to get together, but to use the video conferencing if you have it or if you have it on your phone as a feature. Um, and again, this is something that has to be agreed upon ahead of time, but people are starting to miss each other. And just having, you know, just seeing someone else is a little break that they want. Um, it also allows you as a manager to have a more fruitful exchange with the employee. Look, we don't want webcams to turn it on to see if employees are working. That would be crazy. But I think if we have a webcam and we have video conferencing, why not um, you know, use that opportunity to have an exchange with the employee? Okay, gonna keep moving. 
Um, as far as teamwork, there needs to be clear di direction from management um, when attendance is required to the degree possible. So please be very clear um, as to how that um, you know, attendance is going to be accomplished. And again, a very, very important issue is to pre-test your technologies. If you call a meeting and people haven't you know, tested whether or not they can get on Zoom or they can get on um, Teams or you know, whatever that it is that you're using or sharing you know, just a screen, um, it may take some time. A lot of times having um, a 10 minute um, time before the actual meeting is a good time for everybody to log on and make sure that they can get through. Um, make sure that now that meetings are gonna be electronic, that every meeting has a lead. Usually we walk into a room, we know who's sitting at the top of the table, we know who's the lead and you know there's eye contact. Uh, that goes out of the door when, when we're working in a remote environment. So every meeting should have an agenda, every meeting, of course these are good rules anyways. There should be clear topics it, and every topic should really account for who's speaking, how long they'll take, um, et cetera. Uh, I really do recommend that in this uh, environment that we do try to do those, you know, a 15 minute, a 15 minute team huddle um, as needed. What I've actually seen um, through social media is that some companies have substituted, you know, just a, you know, a sit down coffee with, um, you know, a sit down coffee break. So I know it sounds crazy, but everybody has their coffee mug and they're getting together, you know, before, a, you know, a, on a video. And it, you know, it allows them to talk and maybe even, you know, socialize a little bit. So um, don't, you know, un don't underestimate um, how much of this human element is needed while people are, are uh, in some cases, maybe quarantined, and some people, you know, places where they're just single, they're not going out and do need um, this personal touch. Working alone without interaction for, for days in a row can cause depression. I really fought with myself before I put this uh, particular um, line in here, but it is the reality, um, especially for people who spend a lot of time on their computer and who might be living by themselves. Um, and so what we want to make sure is that, again, as managers, as co-workers, we are having, you know, uh, times when we just get together, talk, break the day, go over what's getting done, and even talk about, you know, personal things if, if needed. Um, I, I think I mentioned this before, but I want to, un again, underline it, make sure that the teleworkers are adequately trained on collaborative technology. Some of us don't have the option right now of you know, getting people together and training them. So I would suggest sending them tutorials and giving them time to learn what those tools are and to practice them. So a few more uh, tips. I think I've talked about huddling or short team meetings. Um, I think trust should be part of your, you know, trust is really so important to teleworking. If you have to call people every hour on the hour to see, are you working? Did you get this done? It's a little, you know, it, it gets to be difficult. So let's try to at least, you know, observe, you know, some level um, of, you know, um, I, I would say some level of abstinence in doing that. However, I think it's, um, you know, it's good to get feedback um, and, um, you know, make sure uh, that we know what's going on. Um, well, we also want to make sure that employees have work-life balance. I mean, our tendency may be, okay, you're home, you're working, you're alone, um, get this done. But you know, this is not a normal time. These are, these are really different, these are difficult times for everybody in the world. And, um, you know, we are all going through the same thing. Um, what's really important in the context of teleworking is to uh, make sure that you are solving issues as managers, as teleworkers, as they come up. Please don't avoid them. This is where, you know, having that feedback loop, having those conversations with IT, if the problem is IT, a lot of times it may be. Um, 
and you know making sure you're talking with managers co-workers is important the more problem solving you do these first few weeks the easier it will get um, as you know you get into uh, you know further weeks of teleworking boy what a nice picture yeah we could stand around and talk like that um, you know now we have to be five feet apart and um, in you know many offices we're not doing this anymore so as far as managers i just want you to know i've touched on the first three bullets here there is an adjustment period so if things don't go very clear and very smoothly as i said be patient um this is you know more than any time this calls on us to be patient to be optimistic and to you know even be cheerleaders and how um, our teams are are getting their work done i'm going to change gears now and talk about the employees um, I want to start this this part of the presentation with sharing with you something really funny that I saw on one of my social media apps. And I don't know if you've all noticed, but people are, are on LinkedIn a lot more. People are on Facebook, Instagram, everything. Um, and um, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of you know good questions that are going on. But the first the, one of the pictures that really caught my attention last night was a woman who was uh, working at home she was clearly sitting you know very put behind her computer and yet you saw a picture of her three kids tied up uh, you know to the ground so that she could um, work um, i know it, it sounds like a funny picture and that's not what we want you to do but that i think picture was very descriptive um you know of some of the issues that we're all facing so adjustments for employees uh, obviously, there are a lot of adjustments that employees are thinking about. So they're thinking about the same things that we're all thinking about. What happens to teamwork? What happens to collaboration? You know, I'm an engineer. I have to work with a lot of people. Well, uh, we're going to get to some of that. But, you know, teamwork has to keep going. And hopefully technology is going to catch up with some of those types of collaborations that might be a little bit more uh, robust than what we're seeing. How will your manager know that you're working? Again, I mean, m meeting those deliverables, you know, hitting those points, those sheets that we develop about, you know, the, the little email that you sent, here's what I'm gonna get done by the end of the week, here's what happened, here's what I did get done. Um, employees worry about being lonely, um, and that is something that we really do need to think about. There's no way to obviously um, be socializing, but again, make it easier. Like I said, make that phone call. And how do we deal with those distractions at home? So these are just some, uh, you know, general um, type of uh, tips for teleworkers. I would give you these same tips whether um, we were in an emergency today or if we weren't. But obviously, you know, that contact is important. If you are saying, I mean, if you're expected to telework, and you've gone through, you know, hammering out some of this with your manager in terms of co-hours and everything, you know, that contact is important. Um, and, you know, make sure that you're following the security, um, you know, protocol and make sure that you're not violating any issues and going, you know, through a VPN or if it's cloud-based, whatever it is that you're, you're really uh, making sure that you're working in that kind of an environment. Um, you know, talk to your employees, make sure that, you know, you can make yourself available for the meetings that are being held by phone or electronically, um, et cetera. Now, a, a few tips uh, that I think are important, um, and this is for teleworking in general, but um, I, I'm gonna say that I'm hoping that teleworkers have dedicated space at home. Maybe it's not, an individual, you know, um, room, but maybe, you know, it's just a corner of their a room where they can set up a safe desk for teleworking. I'm gonna go over a few um, ergonomics tips just to help you with, you know, that process, but please do pay attention, you know, so that you're not working in an unsafe environment. We want you to be healthy. We want you, you know, um, to, you know give some thought to um you know is this the right place for me to be working a lot of times employees who work at home like to use that same space 
all the time when they're getting their work done. And, you know, getting on the couch one minute or the dining room table the next and, you know, going to um, a desk is not what some teleworkers do. They like coming to one place uh, where they can, you know, safeguard for a lot of issues. Please have a routine. We love routines. And um, you know why, why this guy looks happy, this picture? This guy is happy. I'll tell you why. Because he's probably at home and he's teleworking and he really misses his routine of going to work, you know, starting work, getting busy and forgetting about some other issues in life. And I bet you that for some people, work will be a blessing. Because if you have actually the luxury to work at home and you can make it happen, it will be a good way to get a break from the news, from what's happening you know, in the world, and actually you know, being in a comfortable space. Um, we, I also recommend you know, that you obviously organize your schedule, your tasks you know, ahead of time, make to-do lists, um, and, um, and you know, uh, you know, confer with your manager. Something else I saw on, on social media today was, I'm working at home, I can't stop eating, help. So I just wanted to bring that up. You know, there are a lot of bad habits that can creep in uh, when we are working at home, especially, you know, given our situation today, the world situation today. Um, so try to, you know, make sure you, you don't end up with, you know, just watching TV on end and, you know, like I said, or, you know, um, you know, snacking all day or, or there are other bad habits, sleeping too long. Um, and it's, it's really good to try to keep to a routine, especially given what's going on. Uh, ergonomics. Here are some recommendations. Believe me, I know some of this probably goes out the door given that you couldn't, didn't have the time to think about it. But I just want you to know um, that we give you best practices. So it's great to have a desk. Make sure it's a comfortable height for you. Don't work on glass if you can because glass can break. So a wood surface is you know, much better or some kind of surface. If you have a good chair, use that. Um, it's nice to have a chair on rollers, you know, um, which is um, with an adjustable seat. And if you can order one um, online and see if it, you know, you can get one, um, you know, to be delivered. Um, if not, just look at the chairs in the home and, you know, see what's comfortable. Um, by the way, I'm really sorry that I forget to, forgot to mention something. What is critical also is that you don't stay in your chair all day. So start at a certain time, take a mid-morning break if you can, take lunch away from your desk, uh, you know, go mix in with the family and then, you know, get to work again and then take an afternoon break. Breaks are critical. Use that break to go outside and maybe walk if you can, um, you know, or, or take your, you know, your kid out for a walk in the stroller. Um, we just have to get comfortable with trying to, you know, um, make sure that we can help with balancing work and life. So back to the chair, very important. Pay attention to lighting. Lighting should be, you know, um, directed to the side or behind the line of vision. Um, make sure that you have a setup. Uh, and again, this might be hard for some of you, but if you're using a laptop, a laptop without a, a remote, remote mouse and a remote keyboard, is very difficult to work on all day. So try to get something that lifts your, you know, your laptop and provides you with support so that you can actually be working a little bit more ergonomically. These are, these are not very expensive items um, to go ahead and, and order. And I don't know, as employers, maybe you can start thinking of stipends for some of this little stuff or maybe headphones, but you know, every employer is gonna be different. Now, um, other things that employees should be aware of, you know, the electrical support, the surge, uh, connect, the surge protectors, making sure that, you know, you have space around your work area if possible. Don't be crammed. You know, we don't want accidents to happen in the workplace. By the way, if something happens, you got to report it to the company immediately. Noise is um, going to be a factor. Um, so, you know, try 
to minimize it if you can when you're working. But I think this goes along with, you know, what we're going to have to forgive right now in some environments until we, you know, we get more of a balance. Um, I think the message, our message for our families, co-workers, you know, others, to the degree possible, again, is that I'm at home, I'm working. You know, I would love to, you know, to do this with you, but maybe, you know, some families, I've seen couples taking, you know, um, you know, shouldering the, what they ha that has to be done at home um, by splitting the time. So maybe in the morning, you know, the dad's taking care of the kids, and in the afternoon, you know, the other partner is um, taking care of the kids so that you're both getting some good time in where you can get some work done. Um, and, you know, basically meeting some of the responsibilities that you have, um, you know, in, in, in the office. Have rules, please, if you are able to bring laptops home, if you are able to bring some supplies home, make sure that those are for office use because they have been issued by your company and um, they should not be available for your children doing, you know, homework or getting on social media. I know that most companies that provide equipment are very strict about those rules. And I don't think those rules are going to go out the door. I think security and safety are going to be even become more important um, than ever before. Um, okay, so let me keep going. So actually, I, I'm, I'm going to close pretty soon and hand it over back to Johan. But I wanted to say that we may not start seamless today where, you know, you can do a lot of functions at home. A lot of, you know, you as managers may not be able to provide that to your employees. But we, it, this is a time we're hoping that we can, you know, this is a time to make those investments so that it gets easier and easier. Um, obviously, your departments have different cultures. And I think as this program becomes more mature within your groups and, you know, um, within your different uh, departments, you're going to see that departments are going to, you know, take their own culture. So there might, it might be that one department has, you know, huddle time at certain time, and it might be that another department, you know, just does it by phone. So uh, we are going to see that, you know, the programs are going to get tailored. Obviously, planning for access and communication are a key. The more we can communicate our availability, I think the easier it is. Um, I know that I've had to make some adjustments in my time. Uh, believe me, right now, you know, sometimes maybe it's hard for some people to be available during a weekday. Sometimes maybe weekends are better. So I think we really need to get flexible about how we're going to look at this environment and make it a little bit easier for all of us to have a life, to be safe, to be healthy, and to be able to work. Johan, please take it away. Thanks, Elham. Um, I, I really want to, <clears throat> I want to reinforce Elham's point that this is obviously a very unique situation. And how all of our organizations respond um, really seems to be the most critical piece. So we wanted to, to highlight, I think, a few points that I, I kind of have come to the top, uh, to the forefront for us as we respond to this and think about this. And um, one of them is that I think it's really important now to encourage everyone in your teams to treat remote work as the new normal for the time being. Obviously, nothing really feels normal right now, um, but the more that you all establish remote work as normal for your people, the more productive their time will be. It's sort of the same shared perception that reinforces your office as a space for work. So they perceive that this is you know, the, the environment within which we're doing work, and this is the, the reality that we all have. The more that becomes normal, the more productive that time will really be. Um, that's also really going to help address uncertainty among employees as to what the expectations for work at this time are. So your language and practices should really reinforce that this is normal, um, even if it is a very different normal. Um, there's no way around the fact that some work is not ideal for remote, um, but there are other things that can be very well suited to it. So it might be an important uh, step to take a step backwards, consider whether this is the time to pivot in some of your short-term priorities. So consider things that need blocks of focused individual work. 
those sorts of things that might struggle in your you know, open office environment might be very easy to move forwards now, um, or they may be things that can be accomplished in different ways. You know, before employees were sort of you know, really focused on their rigid schedule in the office, and now they might have blocks that they feel comfortable working in the evening instead as a part of you know, managing their childcare situation or what have you. They may be able to take time to you know, research something, to explore some new idea, to develop something or learn a new skill. You know, these are chances to modify how you're doing your work in a way that could be quite advantageous um, if you sort of spend the time to think about it. Um, sometimes, you know, just the chance to, you know, brainstorm independently or check in one-on-one. -on -one. And I, I think, again, this is an opportunity in many ways. Flexibility in work has been a priority for a lot of companies in recruiting, and this is a chance to learn how to make that work for your organization or to understand how to to expand it or leverage it, you know, at minimum as a continuity tool that you have in your toolkit for the future. So, <clears throat> you know, we likely won't keep working remotely five days a week for weeks at a time, but learning how your teams can leverage that remote work will open up the chance to reduce potentially your facilities costs, save your employees some time wasted in traffic, and boost productivity through your future intentional remote work. And one of the hardest parts you know, we found about managing this transition to working remotely is really managing people without seeing them at work. And one of the funny things about that, you know, kind of having the conversation with employers, is we usually realize that you know, managers are used to the, the cues that we receive subconsciously based on the sort of micro check-ins that occur in the course of an office workday, right? It's talking to somebody, seeing what they're doing, you know, having them schedule a meeting. There are all these little things that indicate to you how your team is progressing on their work. And those things have to evolve. And I think really the best advice we can give is try to create systems that can replicate these indicators that lean on performance rather than presence. So these might be technological systems or they might be organizational ones. Organizational ones, you know, they might be if you have a performance reporting structure, KPIs, balanced scorecards, OKRs, whatever you use, um, use this as the backbone for driving your employee performance. If those measures aren't sufficient or frequent to suit your management style, check in using whatever ever, other tools you need as regularly as you need. If you don't have such a structure, this is a pretty good time to explore one of them. And um, similarly, project and task management platforms can be a great way to see in live uh, you know, sort of live collaborative way, the progress being made without asking people to video chat or message you updates all the time. There are also phenomenal tools for collaboration. So employing a project platform could quickly elevate your ability to del deliver and lead. And that's something that's going to be talked about more in webinar three and also something that we can talk about more and with folks outside of this, but something that we just want to highlight as, you know, for anyone that's in the space where they're thinking, oh man, like I, you know, we've talked about this, but maybe we didn't have one, or I don't know if the one that we're working with is the best, or we have this one and I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, so finally, you know, make sure you're getting buy-in from your colleagues. Performance management is not just about accountability. It's really about empowering your people to identify and deliver good work. So be intentional and be iterative with your approach to remote work right now. And we feel you'll, you'll all see the benefits both in the short term and beyond this period of disruptions. This is obviously just the beginning of a, of a process, and there are additional resources available, including the rest of the webinar series, advisors like us, some digital toolkits. And Dan is gonna feature some of those uh, next steps, and I'm actually gonna pass it off to him to give you a, a breakdown of some of what's available right now. Thanks, Johan. Um, before, yes, before uh, I get too much into the, to uh, talk about the, the Georgia Commute website, I just wanna highlight that we are getting close to the, uh, the Q&A portion. So I'm only seeing one question on here. So um, I know Elham and Johan did a great job presenting, but I'm sure there's some additional questions you would have. So it'd be great to see uh, if you wanna start populating those. Um, in terms of the Georgia Commute website, the, uh, we put together a telework quick start guide last week. Uh, and by finding your way to the link that's posted here, you'll be able to enter your contact info and receive a PDF, PDF version of this guide. Additionally, the GCO website also has a link to a great resource from the CDC that gives guidance for businesses. Uh, and finally, in case you have not seen the details of the next two webinars in this series, you can get more information and sign up from there as well. 
the, the next session we're going to have is going to be next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Elham will be back with us as will Katie Gable from Livable Buckhead to host a presentation on how to quickly set up a formal telework program. We'll have a brief explanation of the legal reasoning behind the rules necessary for teleworking and we'll also explore uh, some of the other issues that, that aren't usually correlated to telework. Uh, we'll discuss uh, workers' compensation, OSHA laws, and safety from the home environment. And then next Thursday on the 26th, we'll have uh, Barry O'Brien from Partner Consulting. Uh, he'll be putting together some great resources um, and uh, some uh, collaborative resource technology information like uh, Microsoft Teams, or if you use Google, there's Google Hangouts. Um, it's gonna be uh, really helpful for some folks who may not be as tech savvy. So I definitely recommend that for next Thursday. Um, and again, I just want to thank you all for, again, for attending today, and especially want to thank Elham and the rest of the TMA teams that have contributed to this GCO webinar series. Um, if you're an employee in one of these, an employer in one of these organizations, please reach out if you have any questions uh, or just looking for additional resources. Uh, and last thing we have here in terms of the, um, before we, we do the Q&A, we do have this, this QR code. Um, if you could please take a photo of that on your cell phone to pull up our survey monkey, it'll only take you less than five minutes and it really would help us to get your feedback and to let us know how we can improve. Um, and with that, looks like we have some, a few questions here. So I'll shift over to that. Um, in terms of the, uh, I'll just take the first one. In, in terms of the presentation, we're going to go ahead and um, make, as I, as I said before, we're going to send out the recording of this interview. But as far as resources like the telework guide, um, we have a lot more resources that are available through GCO and with our partner TMAs um, for setting up telework programs. So definitely just reach out to, um, again, if you're affiliated with a Primer Connects or a Little Bucket or, or with GCO, uh, work with our Workside Advisors and we'll get you all the resources you need. And let's see here. Okay, so uh, the next question we have here is, uh, any suggestions or ideas for virtual team building? Um, that's a great question. I think we might be diving into a little bit of that um, on another uh, webinar, but let me, Elham, is that, can you please answer that question? Is that something you'll be covering in the next one or do you wanna uh, answer that here? Sure, um, I actually, I mean, I really do wanna recommend that you please do, you know, listen to the whole series of the webinars. The third one is, is completely focused on those collaborative tools, the technological tools that allow for us to, you know, to do those virtual team building uh, meetings and, and, you know, all of that. I, I think that, you know, if, I mean, really, in the absence of having the, you know, the, the technological to, tools right away, if those have to be, you know, just through audio conferences, you know, don't, don't shy away because of the technology, because you can still come up with an agenda. You can still, you know, um, share that uh, with people through email. Um, and, you know, you can still schedule the time when everybody can call into an audio conference. However, believe me that right now, a lot of, um, you know, the, the providers, of collaborative tools are starting to become, come up with cheaper um, and more available type of conferencing tools that we, you know, they're producing this as the market's evolving. And um, so I really do want you to, you know, make sure that you're reaching out to the IT person on your team so that, um, you know, they are in connection, uh, you know, they know what's happening in the IT world. Um, and, um, you know, so those kinds of connections are critical. Um, you know, I, I, I can tell you, I have a perfect example of a company, a very large company that I've been working with, which has been, you know, promoting in the Atlanta region that we have been working with, that has been promoting um, teleworking for years, but their IT department's not even in their meetings. This is where you really need to work together. Um, and, you know, I know that we're going to put a lot on IT's plate right now, but um, honestly, this is where we have to become resilient. Um, the technology is a huge enabler. So that's, that's all I can say right now. Hey, I'm actually, um, I'm going to chime in and add a few things 
just real quickly. And on, in terms of some specific examples of virtual team building that you might look at, um, I think you can lean into what's going on right now a little. So, you know, this is a, a rare situation where you're working and your kids and your spouse are in the office. So it could be a, you know opportunity if it's not already provided through, you know, the sorts of work that you do. If you have company Christmas parties that include family, great, but many of us, you know, don't interact with each other's partners or children and you can do something fun where they get to introduce their families to everybody over video call. You know, you can kind of lean into that a little bit. You can do some fun activities even that include those extended parts of, you know, people's real lives. And I think that can really reinforce that this is an opportunity and, and that you're, you know, recognizing that the situations everyone is in. And then, a, you know, a little more traditional workspace. This is a really good time if you haven't recently or if you have, but you want to try a new um, sort of uh, evaluation tool, something around um, team members, you know, assessing their skills. So there are lots and lots of skill assessments, communication styles, those sorts of activities, which are really easy for people to do independently. And then you come together remotely and have conversations about the styles that each person has. And there are a lot of those out there. You know, I won't recommend specific ones. If you're interested, obviously reach out to us. We can chat about some of the ones that we've been exposed to, but this is a great time to, to do some of that stuff to really refocus on how your team works um, and, you know, the strengths, skills that each person has. Um, and you can do all of those things virtually uh, quite effectively. Thanks, Johan. Um, I see here that someone that was just entered isn't necessarily a question, but it's uh, a comment that I think makes sense for that is that uh, I think they just started off with a, what's a, what was your first job, kind of a question of your day to kick off that meeting, whatever, and things like that would definitely be um, helpful for those team building uh, exercises as you start a meeting or, or um, going on through the, the rest of your organization. Um, in terms of... Um, uh, can I, I uh, you know, I, um, sorry, Dan, I wanted to, to say, you know, I know I've been in, you know, a lot of meetings where we always talk about safety first. It might be that at the beginning of the meeting, we just have a, you know, a little bit of time for family first so that everybody can share something about what's going on with them personally. But it's kind of replacing, you know, some of the tools we have with other ones that might, you know, make it easier for the employees. Right. Another question that came in is, who should I reach out to at GCO for setting up an official telework program for their company? And it's, uh, it's unfortunately one of those it depend questions. I would say that um, we, we did just enter the Georgia Community Options um, Employer Services link there in the chat box. So if you click into that link, you'll be able to put your information, your contact information in, your, um, I'm not sure if it asks for your employer information, but we'll definitely, uh, it'll put you in the, into our pipeline. We'll reach back out, make that connection. And then depending on if you, um, if it makes sense that you should be like in your, uh, in a Midtown um, Alliance territory, we'll get you handed over to, to that team. If you're in the GCO territory, We'll have a workset advisor reach out to you, so we'll definitely get you taken care of um, if you if you head to that website. Um, yeah, the simplest way to sort of think of this is there are a lot of folks that that do this across the region, and everyone is happy to send you to the right person to make sure that you get the you know this the support and help that you're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, another question we got uh, or received that came in is when things begin to be uh, begin to return to normal. What should the transition back to the office look like and how do we bring, bring employees back in? That's a great question. Um, do you wanna start us off with that, Elham? Yes, I have been thinking about it. I bet you when we go back to a norm, I think everyone's gonna just be dying to see each other. And I, I really mean that. I think we're all gonna to wanna to interact. We wanna see each other. So those first couple of weeks might be where we might see the traffic back on the roads and everybody rushing back. However, I think for those of you who are gonna make the investment in the technology and who in the next, I'm not gonna even put a number of number, you know, on the number of weeks um, in terms of how long we'll be in this environment are gonna be learning from this, making your programs better. I think really what we should do is try to think a little bit more firmly about is this possible on a day a week basis, on two days a week, three days a week. I think we are going to really mature as organizations in adopting the innovation of remote work. And I don't want those lessons, we don't want those lessons forgotten. Because do you want, we don't want, you know, Atlanta to get all crowded again and with lots of congestion. I mean, we do want to feel the vibrancy of the city, but not at the cost of traffic. 
So I do think that it's going to, and we're going to make sure that as the GCO, as TMAs, that we are deliberately getting back in touch with all of you to say, here are the lessons learned. Let's see if this can become part and parcel of how we work. All right. Um, we, it looks like we have one more question here, and that's if the, the Q&A session will be part of the recording. And, and yes, we, we're still re we are still recording, so that will be part of the session. And it's actually, it's, I mean, it's just something that if we're seeing there's more interest in team building exercises for telework, I think that's definitely something that we can start to collaborate on between the TMAs and us as GCO to um, start to highlight that maybe more in our webinar series or at least um, communicate out to you as, as our employers and partners to figure out some of those exercises. Um, so that's something we can definitely start to work on. Uh, another one just came in here. Um, in terms of, oh, it's a very similar question to um, what we had talked about before. If an organization is interested in having this offer to the teams, uh, can a partnership be done with, with you all? It's just going to be dependent on which um, you as an employer, where your business is located. Again, if, if it's in a TMA uh, uh, organization's region, like a Midtown Alliance, a Perimeter Connects, Livable Bucket, um, we would have you reach out to those partners or we or we'll, will connect you with those partners. If you are in the GCO territory, we'll take you, care of you from our end with our worst advisors. And with that, looks like uh, that's it. So again, Thanks to the panelists. Thanks to all of you who could attend today. And we're uh, hopefully uh, see you on next Tuesday. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you.